The Oregon Ducks setting up a big time matchup. The Ohio State Buckeyes coming to Autzen next weekend, but they set up that big time matchup because they handled business last night against Michigan State. A little freaky Friday action, and we always say this. On Friday nights in college football, you expect the unexpected. You expect something weird to happen. You expect the better team to maybe have a letdown. You're looking at the fourth quarter like, whoa, this thing is way closer than we thought it would be. That was not the case last night. Oregon 31, Michigan State 10. We'll unpack it right now. But if you're an Oregon Duck fan, make sure you subscribe right here to the On3 YouTube channel. I, I met one of y'all in the line at Chipotle last week. We appreciate you being dialed in. We appreciate you being subscribed. If you have not yet subscribed, love to have you a part of this, man. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So I think when you look at this Oregon team, they just continue to trend upwards because they open the season against Idaho and everyone's like, whoa, 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 hey, 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 this is not the Oregon. Is this going to be that team in the top 10 that ends up being unranked by the end of the year? Are they fraudulent? Yes, people are saying that. And then the Boise State game happens. And Boise State now, yes, they're a G5 team. And no, they're not going to be the caliber of uh, Ohio State when you play them. But like that's a, that's a we're seeing that's a better opponent than maybe what they looked like in that moment. Still, probably shouldn't be messing with your food quite as much. It's a three-point game. It is what it is. We move on. And so you say, okay, Oregon, what's going on? They beat the brakes off Oregon State. They take UCLA to the woodshed. And last night, they teach Michigan State a lesson. So we're seeing Oregon now collect themselves. And what I've said multiple times now, I think we have to allow the calibration period for these teams that go to the portal and add some key pieces. Because you're breaking in an Evan Stewart. You're breaking in a Dylan Gabriel. You're breaking in key pieces on defense. And so we're seeing that, I think, slowly but surely solidify and get comfortable within this Oregon football program. All right? Now, hold up. Round of applause for the offensive line, man. I mean, genuinely, if you, if you are watching this at home, Pause it. Standing ovation for the offensive line. Because make no mistake, that was the weak link the first few games of the season. Dylan Gabriel, whether it was on him, whether it was on the offensive line, probably some, some shared blame there. That was the issue. Last night, you continue to see them take steps in a positive direction. Is it perfect? No. But is it in a better place than it was to start the year in a much better situation now stepping into the Ohio State game? You better believe it. Third game in a row now, zero sacks. Through the first two games, seven sacks. All right, so the competition level is increasing. The production and the overall just look on this thing is improving. And the numbers are one thing, but I think also like you see them sorting out the blitz in a much better fashion. We got the center, like I guess the verbiage that I think Dan Lanning used would be overlap and doubling all the way back to get you an outside rusher. Like that is, that is good communication. That is great preparation throughout the week. And that is just a, a great understanding of what we're trying to do offensively. So I'm not saying it's perfect, but anytime you allow zero sacks and run for over 200 yards, that is the formula. Make no mistake, that is who they want to be. They want to run the football, and they want to get the ball out of Dylan Gabriel's hands quickly. Now, last night, Dylan Gabriel, good. I think he would tell you there's probably a lot more that he needs to do to get to where they need to be when they play Ohio State. There's a couple ways to look at this now. The two early interceptions, a couple ways to look at it. On one hand, you say, Dylan can't have that. He knows it. Everyone in that stadium knows it. Michigan State knows it. Like, you cannot have those kind of turnovers. What makes it hurt even more is they were in the red zone. Now, the defense was the defense, and we'll talk about them in a second here. But I also think it should be noted, okay, you drove to the red zone. You're a play away there from being able to get 14 points with those two different interceptions. You also say, all right, in some respect now, and this is maybe a stretch, but just, just hear me out here. In some respect, anytime you have multiple mistakes, you feel a little bit like, okay, good, those are getting out of the system a little bit. Because I don't think that's necessarily indicative of who Dylan Gabriel is as a quarterback. You never want to see it. I'm not trying to defend it out here. But I am saying I'm curious now if harping on those mistakes during the week puts him maybe on a little bit more of a red alert to make those mistakes and you clean it up heading into the biggest game of your season. So again, I'm not defending it. It's never a good thing. But you move the football, get to the red zone, and now you're thinking a little bit more about, hey, take care of the football here, DG when you get inside the red. So I'm just saying now, that, that could be something to uh, draw from in a positive manner. He knows he can't make those kind of mistakes, and I'd be surprised if we saw him make those mistakes here going forward. Now, the defense. This is looking like the defense that we expected it to look like. We kept saying this. They are a Big Ten team up front. 
they just now this season are getting the sticker on the back of their helmet to go with the Big Ten label that they are. Uh, Jordan Birch is a dude now. <laughs> like he is an absolute freak show up front, getting after the quarterback, um, multiple sacks for him on the night. They held Michigan State to less than 60 yards rushing. Like that is an outfit now. You need more of that next week. Okay, you need more of that next week. We all understand that. But seeing the overall tenacity, intensity, temperature from the defense. Remember now, we, we flip it back to the Idaho game, and everyone's saying, man, this defense let up a couple big plays. They let up a couple big trick plays from a team that was throwing the kitchen sink at a good defense in their first game of the season. The transfer piece is starting to gel. We're seeing this defense, again, start to look like how we expected them to look. All right? So I think that should be encouraging. Overall, going back to what I said, feels like this Oregon football team is starting to round into form. Okay, they didn't play their best football early, and that's fine. I want you playing your best football when we got Ohio State coming to town. I want you playing your best football in November, in December. And I think this team now, true to a Nick Saban, Kirby Smart kind of team, remember Dan Lanning from their coaching tree, starting to trend upward and play their best football when it matters. All right, Will Stein offensively will have something cooked up for this Ohio State game. If I'm Dylan Gabriel, the thing that we're working on here, the thing that we are harping all week long as an offense, they kept saying it last night during the broadcast, which I thought was interesting. We want the football out of Dylan Gabriel's hands in two and a half seconds or less. Like, that is that is the key. Because when the ball is out, that means it's getting to someone like a Tez Johnson. Tez Johnson, man, he is, he is smooth. I'm not an NFL scout, uh, but it's hard to believe a guy like that won't have some kind of role on Sundays in the fall at some point in time. Dude is special. I mean, he had double-digit catches yet again last night. When you get the football out quickly, you let him work. You let him be special. You let him do what he does. And so as he continues to become, again, more and more, I say, fluent in the offense with Dylan Gabriel, that's going to be crucial for number eight. It's going to be obviously big time for number 15. And everyone else is going to eat as well because they got options now. They got a lot of options. Uh, Treshawn Holden, Evan Stewart. There's dudes. Ferguson, they got dudes now that can hurt you in a real way when the offense is running on time. And again, I think they're trending in the right direction, but that's something I want to see and I'm excited to see more of in terms of how they show up against Ohio State. Because I'll say this, for the Ohio State game, I think both sides of this, whether it be Ryan Day, whether it be Dan Lanning, whether it be Jim Knowles, the DC for Ohio State, or, or Will Stein, the OC for Oregon, like both sides I think have saved quite a bit for this specific game. Because no knock to anyone either side has played. Like, you're not super nervous about the way that, a, you know, a, a Boise State or a Michigan State is going to push you. You feel like if we play our best football, we should win. Now, the Boise State game to push you much more than you would have liked to, and that is what it is. But you feel like, okay, if we play our game, we're going to be in good shape. And so, entering into the biggest game of the regular season for both sides there, and I don't understand the Ohio State fans will say, well, the Michigan game is our biggest game. Hear you. Biggest game to this point in the year for you, if you're an Ohio State fan. Biggest game, I think, of your season, if you're an Oregon fan. You saved a few things in the game plan. So I'm curious to see how exotic Ohio State is defensively. Curious to see how many uh, extra different looks Will Stein has in the bag offensively, because I promise you, he has some now. That's going to be a lot of fun. Quick peek at the Ohio State game for you. This is going to be a trenches game. I truly believe that, especially when Oregon has the football there is multiple players now on the Ohio State defensive line that will be playing on Sundays, okay? How does Oregon meet that challenge? Because we keep talking about them trending up, trending up, trending up, allowed zero sacks the last three games. They look much better. They're communicating better. How does that translate when the level of competition jumps up a couple rungs? I'm not dunking on Michigan State. I'm not dunking on previous opponents from Oregon, but we understand now JT Tui Maloa and Jack Sawyer are packing a different punch than anyone else the Ducks have played. How do they handle that? And maybe more importantly, how does Dylan Gabriel handle that with the shot clock probably being sped up a couple tenths of a second? 2.5 is the number that Will Stein allegedly talks about according to that broadcast last night. Are we at like 2.3 seconds against Ohio State? Are we at 2.2 seconds against Ohio State? Because what they have on the back end as well is going to be something that is the most difficult thing Oregon has seen all year. I mean, I, I would go out and say I think Ohio State has arguably the best secondary in America. So getting the ball in space to those playmakers, letting them work, making them run in the alley, Caleb Downs and company, making them go tackle Tez Johnson, which is a difficult task, that I think is going to be a major differentiating factor in Oregon getting to where they want to be and winning this football game. So, one more thing I'll say. 
you feel good about Oregon so far. They continue to take steps forward. They continue to trend upward. The two picks last night, it is what it is from Dylan Gabriel. Defense has his back, and we're looking at the final score of 31-10. If Oregon takes another step, and there's no letdown, and they take even another step forward, I think they will win this football game. Now, is that our official prediction? Tune in on Tuesday. Prediction Tuesday, 11 a.m. Eastern. We'll give you our official game breakdown for Oregon, Ohio State, and all that. But I'm just saying, if they keep taking positive steps, Oregon will win this football game. Can they do that? Remains to be seen. It's going to be a blockbuster. I can't wait for it. Next weekend, we'll be talking about this one. But we appreciate you being out in. We appreciate you being subscribed. Make sure that you are following all the social channels at JD Patel, Twitter and Instagram. We're going to be reacting to everything that's going on right now throughout your college football Saturday. We're about to go watch some ball right now. So, hey, we appreciate you. We love you. We're going to keep this party rolling, and we will see y'all next time.